Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Bedtime Stories, Episode 4, where we're going to um, do a review of Caught Up Loving a Trill One, Two, Chapter 7 and 8. Ooh, and it gets a little juicy, a little juicy, a little juicy. So, as normal, I start it with a bedtime cocktail today yesterday i did a caribbean sunrise my version but today we're gonna do a tequila sunrise i got the cheapest reasonable non-bottom shelf i could get and today we're going to be using monte alban White rum. It's Blanco, but it's white rum. I mean, white, white um, tequila. Okay, it's not gold. It's that white. It's that white, white. So, what we're going to be using, I because I have never had this, this tequila before, I'm going to taste it. I'm going to take a shot of it. Oh, Lord, I pray it don't knock me out. All right? All right. Ooh, it's te- it smells like tequila. Mm. It smells kind of good, actually. Now, see, this is when I should have brought me some salt over here. I ain't got nothing near a little bit of salt. You know you can't take a shot of tequila and not have... But I'm not really going to take the full shot. I'm just doing it for taste. Okay, it ain't top shelf. It burns my lip a little bit. Mm. I mean, it is a smooth go down. Very little burn. Not bad for. A sixteen dollar lip or a seventeen, it was sixteen ninety nine for a seventeen dollar liquor for this size bottle. It was on sale at the liquor store closest to me. Next time I promise you I will get a better better liquor. But you know what? Sometimes you gotta try other things. Right? Hey Melissa! How you doing, girl? Thank you for showing up for the bedtime story, episode four. So I'm going to cut this music off so we can get into the bedtime cocktail. So this is going to, of course, be Akara's, the eight, according to Akara's version. We're going to be using again uh, because I have a dishwasher, me. <laughs> I washed this out. We're going to do the tequila sunrise. Okay, so I put the rest of the shot that I did not drink in there. And I'm going to put another, there I put another shot, well, partial shot of tequila into 
your to to your glass. Thank you. My bestie got it for me. My tiara, the fifty tiara. <laughs> um. All right, so here we go. So we got that. We got about you know the bottom pass. That's a lot of tequila. That is a lot of tequila, but it's going to be mixed very well with my orange juice. So, of course, like we did yesterday, we're going to fill it to, to taste. It's going to be a lot of orange juice to kind of dilute the, um, tequila. And, of course, with my handy dandy metal straw i'm going to stir it up so it's not all that tequila just at the bottom of the glass you, you know so we're stirring that up put that shot glass because we want to clear this off till when i start doing the review and red grenadine let's make that tequila rise sunrise okay so this time i'm going to pour it on the side of the glass it's still in the center, hoping that it'll give you more of a sunrisey look. But there we go, tequila sunrise. Oh, let's add some ice, and make it cold for you. Add a couple of cubes of ice in there. And that ice is gonna still be icy by the time the end of this show. You hear me? I promise you, it'll still be icy. And of course, I always keep a handy dandy bottle of water. One, because I'm drinking. Two, in case I start having, a, if I, it gets good and I go long and my throat gets dry, there's that water. I take my tips. I take my tips when I get them. All right, so here we go. Tequila Sunrise. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I've noticed I kind of drew my straw up. So, I'm not drinking all of that red grenadine that gravitated down at the bottom. Okay. That's the um, ATA cocktail. Let's get into it. Let me turn Vigo live. Now, they've been on live, but they've just been turned away because they don't allow alcohol and all that stuff. So... We don't, you know, because I'm, you know, I, I G kids be on here too, but you know, that is their community rules. So how y'all doing, Big O? Thank y'all. I welcome y'all to the party. There you go. I welcome y'all to the party. Hey, how y'all doing? I've already said my hellos at the beginning of, of uh, the live to those who checked in. Tarika Jones and all of y'all wonderful people, thank you for showing up for the bedtime story. So let's get into it. Uh -huh. So, chapter seven. Chapter seven starts off. Woo -hoo -hoo. Okay, so chapter seven starts off with Toy and Zeus at Tyson's trial. Let me get to the beginning of the book in case I want to refer to something in the book. And um, the judge has resigned, has um, adjourned the jury to deliberate on whether on his on Tyson's trial, whether they're gonna find him guilty or not. You know what that means, deliberate. And she really didn't hear hear that. She just she heard, okay, let's adjourn. She was like, let me get on out here. She did notice that Tyson not one time looked back at her to see if she was there. He didn't, you know. I mean, he's probably a little salty because just uh, in the last chapter, she told him like she laid down the law. Look, I'm gonna be there to try to you know to show face like as I promised. I'm going to be there. But once this is all is done and you come home, honey, <laughs> we're getting a divorce. 
So I am going to act like the loving wife as I promised you I would and support you through this. But once it's done, said and done, ain't nothing you can do to fix it. And so, but he's a little salty, so he's probably not looking back to see if she was really there. Um, she noticed from her side, I mean, that um, once it was adjourned that her mother-in-law and her sister-in-law, Cynthia and Tarika, was over at, on the other side of the bench from her. Not, you know, all the way on the other side. And gracefully, they had not bothered her or tried to talk to her during this trial. And she was thankful for that. She did notice that Tarika kind of looked at her as she was getting up to leave. But she's like, look, I don't need this shit. I don't know that energy she gave off, but she's like, I don't need this shit. Don't come over here talking to me. Okay. Don't try to interject and try to keep us together, which I don't see the mother-in-law, Cynthia's little ghetto ass, trying to keep them together. Okay. She didn't like Toy in the first place. So she's probably happy that she wants a divorce. Okay. Ooh. I'm about to get some money. My hand itching. Somebody gonna give me some money. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Any rate. So um she she turns to Zeus and said, Okay, if we can get if we can get out of here now, I can go and handle some business before, you know, I go and pick up the girl. And Sue said, like, bet, let's go. So they get in the car and, and Zeus decided to talk to to her about her relationship with Saint. And she's like, really, I don't really want to go into that. If we've slept together, he was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, that w- that night that you didn't want to tell me where you were, you were probably sleeping at his house. Um... Like, I don't want to really be in the business, but I do want to talk to you because this could cause a problem once Tyson gets back. And it's really not my issue between you and Tyson and who you sleep with. I really don't care. But this might affect the business, you know, and we don't really need all that. She's like, look, I got this under control. Mind your business, Zeus, but I thank you for caring. You know what I'm saying? Just let me get on out of here because I got to go and handle some business. Um, I wrote down the jury adjourned to trial of the trial. The judge um, adjourned the trial for the jury to deliberate. She, uh, Zeus wanted to let her understand, I mean, wanted to give her some type of understanding that, look, even though you didn't say anything and y'all not directly say anything, if I can tell without you telling me that you and Saint have something going on, trust and believe Tyson can see that and a lot of other people can see that. And this, this is true. The mother-in-law figured it out. Her mom figured it out. Blanca been new, okay? Um, Zeus figured it out. Matt even figured it out that her and Say had something going on, and if they didn't, they about to. You know what I'm saying? That there is some type of connection between the two. And, you know, but Toya, like, I know that Tyson can be jealous when it comes to me, but really he don't have a leg to stand on with him sleeping with my ex-best friend, having a child with her, continue sleeping with her, and then sleeping around on me, really? Really? So even if he gets mad at it, he don't got he don't got no leg to stand on. So thank but no thanks, Zeus. Okay. Let me I, I'll handle that when it is time to be handled. Okay. And she's right. But I'm not sure it could cause a problem. It could cause a huge problem. You know, because if Zeus is really that jealous now remember back uh in the last book in the last chapters 
when she was connecting with Vic to do, you know, basically provide the, uh, she provide the, provide the nose candy, some, the sugar, the booger sugar for his parties. Um, Vic mentioned that he was into um, toy as well, but she started dating Tyson and I, you know, he believed that Tyson didn't want to do business with Vic because he didn't like the history that him and her her, and toy had, you know, the the connection that they had. He was jealous. He, He mentioned the jealousy as well, you know, so we'll, you know, I'll, we'll see, you know, with Tyson. So, um, so I don't know, maybe Tyson's jealousy can get out of freaking hand. You know, I don't know. Will this affect his business? Cause he's also feeling a little intimidated. Tyson feels a little intimidated that Toy is running shit so well, you know, and he's wondering what, what's the going to, what's going to happen when he comes back? You know what I'm saying? So he got a whole bunch of stuff that he need to get together and fix up and get, you need to get, get out, get acclimated quickly. He got a lot on his head and so does Toy. So at any rate, so, um, I say Toy had a brief conversation. Um, basically Zeus was telling her, so I like, she's like, thanks, but no thanks. I got this covered. So, um, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. So basically, chapter seven was mostly talking about the trial, her talking with Zeus, or Zeus having to talk with her like, hey, this could cause a problem. Okay, you know, just be careful when he gets out. Okay. Now, the business that she had to take care of. Oh, Zeus also assured her that she, uh, Zeus also assured Toy that Saint is going to handle most of the business because of we're going through the trial and we're going to be here and you have a lot to deal with. So she didn't have to worry about the business. The business, you know, regarding that he got that covered. So she said, well, that's good, but I still want to be very much in the loop of what's going on because I'm still in charge until Tyson gets out or until we find out what um, Scar is going to make his decision on where it's gonna, where we're going to go from here. Okay, so we both know that that's not really my choice if I want to get out of the game or not. Okay, um, we'll take that up once Saint gets out. Um, Toy X, um, Zeus says, did you know when um, Scar and Blanca is going to be in town? He said, I don't know yet. I don't know. He hasn't told told me what he's going to do. So, so basically, Scar is keeping everything on the low, close to his chest, about where he's going to go as far as who's going to be doing what. Will he continue desiring to have uh, toy still in the business working for him. Will she be higher up or she have her own thing? Because trust and believe Scar knows that they're, you know, what's going on and the tension that's going on between her and Tyson, you know, will he try to keep them together and have her and her husband work together again and then send Saint back to his old spot? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Or will he allow Toy to to set aside with this business? Somehow I feel like she's going to be involved in this business from now on out into the last to the last book because there's another two books after this one. Um, it ain't gonna be no fun if she's still not in it running shit. <laughs> And Tyson's going to be around, too. These are main characters. So that was pretty much it. The business that she needs to take care of, 
she made a stop at the um, accountant. Now, remember in chapter five and six, she didn't told Tyson, like, once you get out, you get settled, we're going to be divorced. And yes, we're going to split everything down the middle. He's like, well, you can't just all the stuff intertwined and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. You know, you can't just do that. She's like, hmm. watch. Don't believe me, just watch. Don't believe me, just watch. Huh. Okay, so she her stop before the end of the chapter was with the accountant. And she made a very important decision. Now, remember, the accountant was sending $5,000 to Therese. For the baby to keep it quiet. Well, guess what she did? She said, I I said, resume the payments, but cut them in half. And I've already taken money out of the account. Yeah, I did it. I took the money out of the account that you would be using to give her money. Yeah, what you're going to do is you're going to cut it from 5000 to 2500 She doesn't need that much. And she definitely doesn't need no, that much because I already know. So it, you don't need to be paying her for her silence. She don't need that much to, to raise my um, um, uh, stepson. Okay. No, no. She gets half. She lucky I decided to resume the payments to her. But she understood she has a child and she has to take care of that child. Okay. But she don't need $5,000 worth. Mm. So he was like, uh, you did what? She left him in silence and walked out. You said, but can you do this? Have you talked to Tyson? He said, I sure have not. But being that I am half owner of all this shit, and my name is on all this stuff, I made the decision. Okay? If he wants to change it back when he has his money, then we he could change it back. If she don't like her, tell her to step to me, okay? All right? She wasn't having it. So I'm like, okay. I'm telling you, the trill one is toy. Not all these gangsters and drug dealers. The the trill one is toy, okay? The ones that's caught up loving the trill one is Saint and Tyson, okay? (laughs) Come on. Hell, maybe even Scar. And I wonder, I mean, I'm just going to take a side note because the author didn't, doesn't hit me up as much as the last author I did um, um, take all of me because she is my bestie. She used to call me all the time checking me on what she was meant and what da 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 and kind of giving me a glimpse into the what it is. I wonder if Blanca is Saint's mom. Just saying. And Scar is his father. Or something of that matter. Because what I did get from the interview with the author, check it out. I have uploaded on YouTube. You can go to my Instagram and go and check out that um, interview with with the author in full uncut. Is that Saint. I had him cast it as um, Michael Jai White, who is not light-skinned. He's not dark-skinned, but he's not light-skinned. But she told me that she had him cast it as a light-skinned brother. So, and just Blanca, to me, I see her as that, um, oh, I can't think of this, the that white lady that, the actress, she was in Rocky when she was married to the Russian guy. I can't think of her. She, if it was going to be a Blanca, she's Blanca. Okay, I see her as a white woman from Colombia. You know what I'm saying? I just, I feel like she's a white woman. I feel like she's a white woman and, oh. Uh, Dang it, I can't think of her name right now. And she dated Flavor Flav. Anyone who knows that, throw that in the comments if you remember her name, her actual name, not what the character she played. But at any rate, I see her as him. And if he's light-skinned, 
and Scar, maybe he is his father, but Scar doesn't know, and Saint doesn't know. I'm just wondering. I'm wondering. Okay, that was a side note. Okay, so that was the end of chapter seven with her going to the accountant and telling her, telling him to cut that check in half that you send to Tariq. Okay, so there it is. Let me take a sip of my sunrise. Ooh. Actually, the kill of sunrise takes a whole lot better than the rum, the Caribbean sunrise that I did. Like, I can taste the tequila, Beller. I can taste it. With the rum, that joint sneaks up on you like the Pink Panther. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I forgot the music to the Pink Panther, but do 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 yeah <laughs> okay there it came back to me as soon as I said I didn't remember it okay so nice little intermission okay um let's move on to chapter eight chapter eight starts out with them back. Zeus, Tyson, I mean, Zeus, Tyson, Toy, Cynthia, Tariq, all in court, waiting to hear the verdict. At this point, they were at deadlock. The jury is at deadlock on that Friday prior to this moment now. So the judge adjourned to allow the jury to deliberate throughout the weekend. And they come back. Um, they're back in court on that Monday to find out what the verdict is. Okay. Toy is nervous because she, even though she has been assured by Scar that Tyson will be coming home, there's no guarantee there's no guarantee that he'll be able to come back home. I apologize. I apologize. Chapter 8 does not start out with them in court. It starts out with Tyson in his cell, staring at the wall, staring at the ceiling, not being able to get sleep because of everything that is going on right now you know um his attorneys assured him that that the a jury that doesn't come back quickly is usually is in the favor of the defendant but you know that does not give him any reassurance he needs to hear it for himself but he's also worried about where his place is once he gets out if he gets out where will he stand Will he be able to mend his marriage back again? He sees hope because Toy has shown up in court every day during his trial. Even though he ain't looked back, he knew he was there because Cynthia told him. His mama told him. Ooh. Did I drip on my sack? I hope I didn't drip on my sack. I think I dripped on I dripped a little bit. Napkin. Anyway. Um, so he's worried about that. What is he going to do when he gets out? Will he be able to mend his marriage? Will he get out? You know what I'm saying? And that's when he got a call from Mac in the cell. He was like, oh, man, he's like, I just called to check on you, blah, blah, blah. And really what he did is call, Mac wasn't calling to really check on him as opposed to tell on toy. Okay, real talk. And so he was like, you know, doing small talk. He was like, yeah, I know it's, you know, this rough, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. He said, like, yo. So Mac basically was like, yo, you need to check your girl. When you get out and you come home, you need to check your girl because she's she's acting different. She's moving real different. You know what I'm saying? She came over here um, doling out empty threats. I don't know. Toys the trill one in my eyes right now. I don't take any threat that she says 
as empty, okay? But, and, you know, Tyson's like, hold up. I need to do what? What? He looked at, took his phone from his ear and he looked at the phone. Nigga, what you say? He was like, you need to check your girl. She tripping. She coming over here and said, hold up. First of all, what I'm not going to do is sit up there and stand in between two grown people. Whatever beef y'all have, y'all need to work that shit out. Okay? And if she, she, you know Toy long enough to know that she ain't just doling out no empty threats. So, you know, and so, so, and Mike was, Mac was like, what you saying? You, you saying that you talking to me like I did something to make her that way. Well, you had to do something because she doesn't, you know, good and damn well, Toy doesn't do that. Okay. You know, good and damn well, she don't come around with no empty threats. She's a woman of her word. She clearly has made it very clear that she's a woman of her word. If she said she's going to do something, she's going to do it. Okay, so what happened? Or not even what happened, just get it together. And how are you sitting up here getting upset and feeling some type of way over a woman? And then you telling me I need to check her when? When? Houseway? You know, all the times as long as, long as you've known us, when have Toy ever been controlled? Ever. Ever, ever, ever. If anything, she's trying to control the situation. But she ain't to be controlled. He was like, Mac, like, you know, you right. You right, you know. And Mac took that as like, move how you are, you want to. Just don't fuck with Toy. Okay? Look, just do whatever. But Mac failed to tell him that the reason why she threatened him is because he's the reason why. His insubordination is the reason why they've been going through these hits, <clears throat> going back and forth with the Alabama crew and everything. Tell him that, Matt. Tell him that. Tell him that, Matt. Tell him that you're the reason why we've had all the situations that's going on. It might not even went that way. Toy didn't ha may not have shown up as a true one. She would have been just handling the business as normal, waiting for him to come home. But no, you had to disobey as soon as that nigga went to jail. As soon as he went to jail. Which makes me still feel that Mac had something to do with Tyson going to jail. Like he was a snitch. He was a key component. Okay, and I believe Scar knew that Mac had something to do with it. He knew it was Mac. Or more likely than not, Mac. Mac is not, he is a, he is a lieutenant, lieutenant, lieutenant that is trying to take over Tyson's spot. He wants to take over. And poor Tyson don't even know. Tyson doesn't even know that Mac did what he did. Because I don't think he would have talked to him if he knew that he's the reason and his insubordination. And because of his insubordination, he almost got killed and he almost got his wife killed. I promise you their relationship will change as soon as Tyson finds that out. And I believe he's going to find out as soon as he gets out. So now we in, we're back in court. Toy is nervous. Even though she's been assured by Scar that he will be released and coming home, she needs to hear it. Much like Tyson, I need to hear it for myself. Okay? Because fact, even Tyson say earlier in this chapter 8 that he was guilty of all the crimes. That was brought to him. You know I mean, brought against him. He's guilty of all of it. You know? So it's like, eh, the chances are. But, his, you know, and his uh, attorney, Chase, Stephen Chase, was really good. But so was the prosecutor. So uh, he's still nervous. 
Toy's nervous, even though it's like, I don't know how he's going to, I don't know how Scar can assure this, and me either, I don't know how he can assure anything about him being released unless he got some inside connections, which is possible. But this one, this trial went on as normal. Okay, the trial went on as normal. Oh, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, okay, so Toy's nervous, so on and so forth. She's like, you know, Zeus has to pat her on the, the leg because she she's, you know how you shake your leg and her heel is clicking up against the the, the floor. Click, 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 because she is nervous. Um, and Zeus has to kind of put his hand on her leg to, like, it's going to be okay. Just, you know. And so she's like, okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. She breathes. She forces a smile on her face. Okay, let's let's go. And then out of the corner of her eyes, she sees her sister-in-law coming her way. And she's like, oh, God. Here she comes. So, Tarika comes up to her. And she clears the throat. <clears throat> um, Toy. He said, yeah, what's up? What's up, Tarika? Not looking at, still looking at the front of the... Um, courtroom. I know, you know, with everything that's going on, um, look, uh, um, I just want to ask, it's the holidays are coming, Christmas is coming, we haven't seen the girls in months. And though I understand everything that's going on, you got a lot on your plate, me and my mom want to know if we can spend Christmas with the girls. We haven't seen them in months. I mean, they are we're their family as well. And, you know, she looked at her, and she noticed a change in her demeanor. Not as cocky as before, you know. And then she realized that they didn't have the assurance like Scar had given her that he's going to be out. They don't know. They're literally here to find out the fate of her brother and Cynthia's son. They both had a whole different demeanor. That's the reason why they left her alone during the trial. It's because it's like, I'm too, I'm just concentrating on him hopefully being able to get out of this. I don't know how. They don't know. And she kind of softened up a little bit. And she's like, well, just true. They are your family. Um, let's just see what happens. If Tyson gets out, then you will be able to see the girls when, you know, with him during the holidays. Okay? Um, let's just wait to hear the verdict. Okay? He was like, Okay, okay. And I do believe that had the verdict been any other way, that she would work out something for the girls to see her other side. Because it's not fair to keep them from their other side, no matter how much you like or dislike the mother, your mother-in-law, or your sister-in-law, you know? So... They read the verdict. They, I mean, the judge called for the four four person to to come up with. I mean, state their verdict. And um, the foreman said, uh, "We don't. We we can't come to a decision." And so the judge disappears, and I guess he went out and came back. It's like, okay, you sure? There's nothing? 
there's nothing, no, we can't deliberate any longer that would change and come up with a solid verdict. And it was like, no, sir. And so the judge said, I have no other choice but to call this a mistrial. Okay, so I'm pretty sure as Cynthia, the, his mother, probably was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. You know, a judge, of course, asked the defense, I mean, the prosecutor, are they going to bring this back to trial or not? They said they weren't sure at this time. So he gave them some time to figure out what they're going to do. So, um, he said, so I guess he's going to be released shortly because it's been a mistrial. Um, this does not mean that he, they cannot bring it back to court. They can't find more evidence and want to bring it back to trial. But as it stands, he's a free man. Okay. So, um, Toy is relieved. She said, okay. Zeus is like, you, you, do you need to stay for anything else? She's like, no, nah, not really. I, I heard what I need to hear. Um, she's still, at this time, Tyson still hasn't turned around to look at her to see if she's there or anything. It's like, hmm, he's still saucy, huh? And she's like, well, let's get on out of here. Let's go on, handle some business. Let's go continue handling. We know what it is. Let's get, let's get it. Let's go. And so um, she gets up, she gets up with Zeus. They head out and she doesn't turn back to see if he looked her way, finally looked back at her, but so she walks out, and right, she at that point, she missed Tyson looking back, because at that point, he decided to look back and she wasn't paying any attention to him at all. I mean, you know, she was gone. She was gone, and that was disappointing for him, but she was there, but, you know, what What can he say? You know, you try to you, you play stiff net with it, and that's what it is. But they had gotten a call. Zeus had gotten a call from Saint that he wanted to see them as soon as the trial was over. And so they went, they got out of there, went straight to find out what was going on. And um, so they met at the car wash that Toy owned. And, um, you know, to find out what was going on. What was, what was, what we, what did we need? What was, what was the trouble? What was the problem? <clears throat> Toy, of course, arrives before Zeus does. And because uh, he walks her to her truck, they leave the court at the same time. But she got there quickest. She she entered in. Um, Mac was counting the money. He said, so and she comes in and says, so what's, what's up? What's wrong? Um, he said, is Zeus with you? He said, no, he's coming in a little bit. I said, well, I want to tell y'all both together. So, so, okay. So I heard that, you know, he says, I heard that Tyson's going to be getting out soon. He said, yeah, you know, um, they talk. They make some small talk, of course. She asks him, are you going out of town for Christmas or are you going to stay here? He's like, he's like, why you at? You going to miss me? She's like, nigga, dog, no. I was just asking, you know. <laughs> she was like, whatever. I'm just asking, you know. She said, yeah, I'm going to go back home. It's the Christmas is a big deal for us in, at home, and my sister will lose her mind if I don't come back home. So, but I'll be back on the twenty sixth, right afterwards. So, you won't have to miss me for long, right? <laughs> so she was like, "Whatever, whatever." So he said something nice to her. Don't worry, he said, "Don't worry, I got you a gift." <clears throat> She said, you got me a gift? She said, yes, and I've learned that you, a woman that likes uh, grand gestures of gifts, 
You know, come on. These are Tyson that have been brought you a whole wedding event um, venue. You know what I'm saying? For you as a gift. Okay. I can't compete with that, but I do. I can drop a couple of bands on the gift that I'm going to give you. I'll give that to you later. He's like, oh, you know, whatever. They kiss a little bit and then boom, boom, boom. Zeus comes in, I mean, knocks on the door and says, hey, it's me, y'all. Um, after that intimate kiss and talk and conversation about Christmas and stuff like that, um, he goes to unlock the door, and the softness that he had when with Toy, when he's only around Toy, the, the, the playful, flirtatious banter ends. As soon as Zeus comes in the door, he's all business. He's back to business. Like, now, let's get it together. The issue is uh, the Alabama crew is coming up short. They're coming back with half the money. And they don't have any excuse on why they're doing it. And when I ask, they call humana, 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 humana. You know, well, whoever's doing, let me know who it is. They don't humana, humana, humana. He said, I'll go and shoot them myself. I'll take care of business myself. And um, so Tyson, I mean, not Tyson. So Saint is saying like, oh my goodness. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. But we need to find out what's going on. He said, we dead toys like we damn sure need to find out what's going on. Do we need to make a trip down to Alabama? Basically, Saint said, look, I gave them a week to come up with the money because it's the holidays. I'm feeling festive. So I'm going to give you a week to come up with the rest of the money. Okay. Now, we know that Rico is gone and Omar is gone. Okay. So where this money coming? Where this money going? Where this money going? Is They're not getting orders from... The, they're higher up because they did. So where does money come? And they're saying, oh, someone robbed one of them. That's where the money is going. So half of the money is gone because someone got robbed. Who did it? You don't have no clue on who did it? Nah, that's not even okay. So we end with them figuring it's like, okay, well, we're going to let this holiday, but we're going to find out what happened. Okay. If I don't, Scar is. Okay, so that's where we end with chapter eight. Um, that's all. So I gotta hurry up and end this because I don't. I want to that de definitely be able to download this video so that I can upload it to IG later tomorrow. <laughs> At any rate, that's all I have for you. You all have a wonderful evening. Remember. Come back here on Friday evening at 8 o'clock for Bedtime Stories Episode 5, where I'll be reviewing chapters 9 and 10. All right. Oh, we going. We running through these chapters, child. We're going to get to the end of the book. We're going to find out what happens when Tyson comes home. Is he going to notice? that Saint and um, Toy have a thing going on. Is he going to be um, put back in his old spot of running the Atlanta branch of Scar's empire? And is Saint going to go back home or go back to his old spot where he was designated? Is Toy still going to be in the game? Is Therese going to get her ass whooped again because she deserve it? Will Cynthia be a whole asshole mother-in-law again? Will Tyson be able to win back Toy? Is he going to be able to win back Toy? He seems to think he will. We'll find out. At any rate, that's it. I will see you next um, Friday, 
for the bedtime stories at 8 o'clock. No, correction, at 9 o'clock, because that is a work day, honey. I ain't going to be on here trying to rush home and try to do all this, okay, honey? Mm. <clears throat> so, there it is. Remember, love yourself, love your neighbors, and stay authentic. Y'all have a wonderful evening and a great day back at work on Monday.